welcome to my sewing room where I create and explore all things vintage style and vintage fashion. Currently obsessed with the 1940s and the 1950s, but that could change at any moment. And welcome, finally, to part two of the Mrs. Maisel Project. So I am aware and slightly embarrassed that I couldn't live up to the goal I had and the expectations I set of a weekly upload schedule on Sundays. So if you've seen part one of the Mrs. Maisel Project, you know all of this where I made the promise that the video was coming next week and it did not. Yeah, about that. So realistically for me, I'm going to need a bi-weekly upload schedule. So you can expect videos from me consistently here every other Sunday. I think for me that is gonna be the best way to make content that I love and that I'm proud of and really enjoy the process of creating these videos. It takes time for me to create these looks and time for me to create the videos and I just want to be able to enjoy the process. And so with that elephant put to bed, let's get into all things Mrs. Maisel. So if you haven't seen part one of this project, I definitely recommend you go check it out and I will leave a link to that. So in that video, I go more into detail about the premise and the inspiration for this project. I share with you the materials and where I got them from, the authentic vintage sewing pattern I'm using to create this look, and I also make the pillbox hat for this ensemble. So I definitely recommend checking that video out. It's a short one, it's fun, it's quick. You get to watch me make the hat and all of those beginning things. And so this video is part two of three. In this video, I'm going to sew the dress and create the gloves for the look. In the following video, two Sundays from now, I will sew the coat and put everything together and give you all of the final look shots with the coat and the dress, the gloves, the hat, the whole thing. So I'm really, really excited for this. I'm excited to get this project back on track and to get it completed. So season four is now currently streaming. If you're watching, please let me know what you're thinking of the shenanigans Mrs. Maisel is up to and the beautiful outfits that she's wearing. I would love to hear all about those in the comment box below. So let me know all of your thoughts on the episodes that have aired so far. If you liked the video, like the video and share it and all of those good things. And so with all of that said, let's get into the construction of a 1950s dress and 1950s gloves to go with my 1950s pillbox hat and my 1950s coat that come together to make the Mrs. Maisel iconic look that we all love. So let's get into the sewing. So the pattern used for this project is a butterick from the 1950s, 8044, and the fabric is a polyester fuchsia shantung that I got three yards of from Mood Fabrics. I'm not too sure about the feel of this fabric. It was something I hadn't worked with before, and it has this weird texture. It shifts around and moves a lot but it was so close to the color of the dress that Mrs. Maisel was wearing and it was so inexpensive that I decided to just go for it. In hindsight, because of the details on the neckline of this dress, it probably wasn't the best choice, but these are things that you know in hindsight. This dress was very easy and quick to cut out. It had me super excited for this project. I thought this dress was going to be a very easy one. There are two darts on the back of the bodice. It's cut on the fold, and here I am using chalk to trace those out. I can never get the lines perfect, but I get them close enough. I flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. So you see this neckline where it gathers here? This ends up being the most difficult part of this project and what leads to all of the discouragement, but more on that later. So the darts went into the bodice back piece so very quickly and so very easily. So I moved on to construction of the skirt. I laid out the pattern piece. I traced out the darts just like I did the bodice, took those to the sewing machine and got those stitched in. And then it was time to attach the panels to each other. So I did that and took to the sewing machine. And so I was feeling really confident and this project was coming out so quickly. So 
I've put the gathering stitches at the waist of the skirt front piece. And so now I'm going to attach the skirt front to the skirt back that I just got through pressing and pinking. And then I'm supposed to leave the left side open for a zipper. And then I've also already pinned in place the bodice and I'm gonna stitch it when I stitch the skirt together so I don't have to keep getting up and down. And then there was gathering that goes at the neckline of the dress as well. So this is moving right along and um, we're making good progress. So first I'm gonna stitch the bodice. I have some chalk markings on here. I'm not that sure what they were for. I hope I didn't just make a crucial mistake. We will see as soon as I get up and check the instructions. Cause I just sewed right through those markings. So why would they, why would they be there? Okay, so what it was, was that I was supposed to stop at this second one. So I'm going to unpick this now and then go reinforce that seam so we don't have a problem there later. So here's the first real mistake when it comes to the bodice, the first of many mistakes. So that stay piece, I was actually supposed to cut out of paper and it is used to hold everything in place to stay basically while you gather down these stitches at the neckline and it's meant to be torn away later. Off camera, did it over the correct way and I ended up cutting it out of just regular like tissue paper that you would use to wrap a gift. That's what I had laying around. Okay, so now that I attach the seam binding that they had me make and tore away the stay as best as I could, I'm not 100% pleased with like how this neckline looks. I don't know if it bothers me enough to do it over. I, I just really don't know. But they said stitch these in part together at a one fourth of inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna somehow turn this to the right side, which I'm not even sure how that's supposed to work. And then this will be that bow that I originally thought was like elastic or some sort of gathering. And then I think once that's done, we'll then stitch this down and it becomes like the finishing edge. I, I'm not 100% sure, I'm just gonna, I'll show you the instructions. Cut a one inch wide bias strip of fabric, we did that about 50 inches long. Stitch one edge of binding to neck edge and one fourth of inch seam, center back match. tear paper stay away, fold the ends in half, stitch and then turn right side out and press. Roll binding inside, turn in free edge of binding hem over seam, turn in edge towards each other, slip stitch, tie a bow. And so once that is done, there's not a lot left to do. We'll do the side seams and then attach it to the skirt and put in the zipper and then this dress should be done. The skirt's looking good, it just needs to be hemmed. So I'm gonna try to do those things and then we can start on the gloves. So it's a new day. Um, I wasn't able to get much done the day that I shot the intro that's probably in here or maybe it's not in here. I don't know what's happening at this point. Um, I'm feeling a little better. I feel like my voice is coming back. I still look a little horrible. I normally don't let you guys see me like this, but I think at this point in our friendship, um, I'm okay with letting you see me like this. What I'm doing now is stitching um, the strips around the neckline of the dress, which then I'm supposed to turn to the right side, which I don't know how I'm going to do that, how exactly that is supposed to work, but I'm gonna stitch it and then figure that out. So I think I was supposed to stitch it as far as like to the neck edge. And so I'm gonna try and flip this one before I do the other one just to see if I can sort of figure it out. Okay, so what happened was, it is possible to turn this to the right side, but I didn't really make this wide enough. The ends kept fraying. 
All these bad things were happening, so I cut out another piece using pinking shears. I'm going to take this completely off and start back at the part where I have the stays, and then I can reposition this into a way that I'm happy about instead of just this mediocre way I've done it and start again. Okay, so this is how I've decided I'm going to finish this edge. I don't think this is the way they intended for the seam binding to sort of work, but this is how I'm gonna do it. Cause I had already done the shoulder seams. I don't wanna take them out. I don't know how this is gonna fit if I've gathered this down right because I took it out and I did it again without the stays. I'm just going to use pinking shears on the inside of this and I'm gonna stitch in the ditch and stitch this all down and press it and just hope that it looks neat enough to get by which I think it will once I get it all stitched down and pressed really good. So I'm gonna take that to the sewing machine and stitch it down and see what happens. So here we are. I sewed this down um, it doesn't look that great in the inside. I'm going to cut more off here with the pinking shears. And I mean, that just is what it is. I'm not particularly proud of this, but I'm not mad at it either. I'm going to clean this. So I had to move on from that neckline. I stopped and started this project so many times over that neckline. I got sick in the process of making this dress. Everything was telling me to just scratch the whole project, but I was in too deep to turn around. It was just a nightmare. I'm always amazed how I can be so confident going into a project and in the beginning stages and then one little thing just throws me for a loop and just throws me all off. And that is exactly what happened with this project. I just moved along. I attached the bodice to the skirt, I did the sleeves, I stitched this all together, there is nothing left to do but put in the zipper, and so I'm moving on now. So I have here on the table the pattern for the gloves. It was a vintage reproduction sewing pattern, and so you can pick this up. I will leave a link to it in case you wanna purchase it. I've never made gloves before. I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty simple and I'll be able to get it done today. So we will see what happens. So the dress is almost complete. It's just waiting on a zipper. Some weird things happen with the neckline. You'll see all of that, but that's kind of what threw this project off. I got really discouraged with it. So today the goal is to try to fix the neckline some and get the zipper in. We will be done. The coat is coming along pretty well. So, here it is. I've got the collar pinned on. I've got to get that in. Um, the facing and then the lining. And then that's pretty much done. We're definitely making pretty good progress. Let's get started getting the gloves cut out. I'm going to get my sewing machine out and get it threaded and we will see how long this takes. So here's the pattern that I'm using. It is a Vintage Butterick 1232 um, and it's been reproduced so the pattern pieces look like this um i really like a but i don't know i'm a little scared of a so we're gonna start with a1 which just is a plain simple glove and maybe once i can master this one i'll make these at some point but we're just gonna do a1 just so we have the gloves that match the hat and this should be fairly simple so i have everything positioned these are the fingers the thumb middle finger, pointer finger, third finger, and everything's cut um, against the grain, so I'm guessing so it has some stretch left to it.
So I really tried with these gloves and I just can't. I, I tried two different pair, couple different techniques. I tried by hand, I tried by sewing machine. Nothing, nothing went right and I don't wanna hold my project up anymore based on these gloves and so I'm scratching them. I'm disappointed, but it's just where we are. The dress is looking good though. So you guys, here's the dress. It is complete. The neckline looks a lot better than I thought that it would. The dress came out pretty well and it's been completed. I was just hoping to get the gloves done to go with this ensemble and I just couldn't. And that's okay too. I'm gonna order some off of Amazon. Even though I really wanted to make them myself. It just didn't work out and it really took the joy out of this project and I have to remember that's why I do this is because I enjoy it. And I really hate to be a quitter, but when something makes me as miserable as those gloves did, I'm quitting. I have to keep that initial thought as my primary goal of being happy and I'm happy with this neckline. It was enough to make me want to quit and so I'm happy to just finish the dress. And now I'm moving on to the finishing of the coat. I hope you guys aren't disappointed with me. If you want to cheer me up, share with me a time that you had to quit and I'll see you in my next video that is soon and sure to come.